So now we have Karthik and he's going to, ah, that's a good question. Uh, he is going to answer the question, I hope. Uh, how easily can neural networks learn relative to the For example, the University of Texas is often on this corpus of the helpful of Sorry. Um, in Kartik, I'm an undergrad at the University of Texas at Austin. This work was done with the help of Dr. Peter Lee, also at UC. Um, so, relativistic invariants are key variables in high energy physics, and we believe that they're led to simplicity by deep learning approaches. So, what I try to do is I try to investigate the minimal uh, network complexity needed to accurately uh, extract these invariants. And hopefully, doing so will help us understand how complex we can make neural nets in order to obtain certain functions. Um, before I get into that, I just want to mention that I use CARES as a high school background. Um, uh, so, um, I do that took four vectors of certain events to study the problem of problems of certain events. Uh, transverse momentum is the uh, transverse momentum from 91 to the TT or K, as well as the American mass of the thing. Now, I try to uh, just be hyper. Primaries here, the number of nodes, the number of layers, and actually function. And I explained how just a little bit of that. So this might remind you a little bit of Daniel Whiteson's primary talk yesterday. Um, I want to recap a few points today because they're pretty relevant to what I'm talking about. Um, in one of the slides, he mentioned that a single hidden layer um, can accurately model essentially any function. Universal approximation theory, um, but it's theoretical. That doesn't mean that practically we can actually use one compare to at any variance, such as invariant mass or PT. Um, he said that right here. I think how he said it was that certain grad students might take a machine learning class, expect that you can just throw four vectors at a neural network, um, go to lunch, and then hopefully get back. Nonlinear functions such as invariant. Um, what I did is, uh, I did exactly that. I just threw four vectors into the neural network and tried to see if I can get the very mass of GT. Um, and it was also actually pretty surprising. So for PT of the BME mean as well as the new one production in TT bar, um, as you can see, two four vectors from the two muons um, with one in layer and an output of PT. Except with the single layer, it trains pretty well. Um, so with or from one to ten nodes, logarithms across each is well. And in fact, with one layer uh, with ten nodes with rectified linear units, you get almost perfect accuracy in predicting PT. That's 0.99995. And so you can see that, well, if you investigate what's happening to the weights of this hidden layer there, uh, the energy and the P that are given weights is zero. And the weights for Px and Py are symmetric for both neons. And what this essentially means is that the neural network is learning some non-layer function of Px1 plus Px2 and Py1 and Py2. So a pretty small neural network, one layer and ten nodes, is able to learn, you know, difficult for these reasons. On their function. Um, not too surprisingly, adding additional layers provided no increase in accuracy before you getting up to <coughs> just one layer. Um, in fact, when I first looked at this, the accuracy did significantly um, when you have a single node in the next layer. So for this heat map, the x axis is the number of nodes in layer one, y axis is the number of nodes in layer two, and this row right here is just having one hidden layer, you no know, second hidden layer. And this row right here is having a single node in the second layer. So there's a diff. Um, this occurs because I use rectified linear units in soft plus, and these suffer from having zero gradient and negative. So during training, these neurons will die, essentially, because in negative inputs, there's no gradient. Um, so in order to fix this, this row is used uh, to make a fixed problem. So when you use it, you get uh, the problem completely gives away. You still see that, you know, having an additional layer doesn't really increase accuracy at all. A dropout may have also worked, 
predicted that it has to wait much time to investigate that. But the main takeaway from investigating the invariance or uh, the PT is the fact that we can get some nonlinear functions with the old networks, even just with the single layer extended networks. Um, so this was confirmed by using a TT bar simple. So we know that TT can be gone from any value you want in production. Um, and again, this is a pretty good accuracy of 0 0.9999. Um, so what about invariant math? So like I saw, like we saw beforehand, pretty good with TT. Uh, pretty good accuracy with PT. With invariant math, the same neural net architecture, which is one layer, 10 nodes, and we here as we use, we drop our accuracy down to 0.97. Um, we get a better accuracy with 20 nodes in the single layer, um, but it's still nowhere as good as PT. You only really start getting similar accuracy to PT when you have a large number of low nodes in two layers. So this right here is what you get with 80 nodes in the first layer and 80 nodes in the second layer. Um, so I think the heat map here also illustrates this. This is the number of nodes in layer one, the nodes in layer two, one to ten, and zero to ten. So there's not very many uh, nodes here. And you see very little progression in accuracy here. You don't really see any change. Um, when you have a huge number of nodes, say 10 to 100 and 0 to 100 here, that's when you finally get to see the progression in getting better accuracy. Um, so Technically, yes, for indirect math, it, it's much harder to find uh, much harder to find indirect math than it is for PT. That's not necessarily because it's a nonlinear function. Um, I didn't have time to put this in here, but I saw what happens if you have e squared plus p squared instead of e squared minus p squared, which very massive. And with e squared plus p squared, you have almost the same accuracy as with um, PT shows that it's not really the nonlinearity that oftentimes makes this hard to learn function and the other stuff, which is probably the minus sign that occurs in great maths. Um, I think I went a little fast here, but um, my summary is that um, they use neural nets for regression of transverse momentum and invariant maths in two body systems. Um, I noticed that we really was essentially the best activation function across the board, regardless of the problem you use for the repeat or the very mass. Um, a single layer with 9 to 10 nodes has almost perfect accuracy for finding PT the regime that I investigated in. Um, from Dynamo on production and that sample independence was found using a CPU bar. Um, the exact features of what's going on in the direct math problem I'm still investigating. Um, hopefully, by the high accuracy that to find that, and I plan to look into invariant other areas such as the Thank you. So in this regard, I would say then what Ben wants to set is, is true in the fact that you, know, you need a lot of layers to set in your mass. But I would I would say it's not because it's a nonlinear answer, but maybe five to Well, I mean, he's not actually trying to calculate that, I think, right? This is more a study of how do these networks behave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another question about the uh, Yeah, so I have a question but um, there's not specific values, just you know how many bins I have to train on to an actual regime. I think 
later the same simple portion, but if the frame rate they've added enough, I guess it's true. I just wonder the gradient is wrong. Right, so that leads me up to a question I had. How do you want to probe, you know, the, the effect of the zero, uh, of the minus versus the plus, basically? What's your idea there? Um, so like I said, I, I tried d squared plus d mm -hmm. squared, and that did have significant improvement of d squared minus d squared. Um, but that did not get us to make the t p. Um, there could be other reasons that I'm not seeing so far that lead the uh, invariant mass, but other than just Trying out how e squared minus p squared, e squared plus e squared uh, work out in different architectures. I think that's going to fetch up with how different architectures affect the plus and minus. Well, you could also, of course, plot the, the measure of merit against, um, say, the values, right? So maybe it's a cancellation problem or something like that. So. I also suggest you to try different activation plots. Um, I mean, I, I tried. Sorry, the relative. Oh, relative. I tried some of the standard activation functions, like the block ending signal, and relative would be a. Uh, that's the wiki relative. Right? That's one of these. Um, I think there's more advanced activation functions. Okay. That. You mentioned this was for PDP. Oh, it was also a test for your parents. Okay. Thank you very much.